two cents for two. Yo, it's Mr. House. What's up, it's your boy C. Woods. And Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our two cents. What's up, y'all? What's up? We have a uh, very, very, very important guest, very special guest with us today, man, Mr. Dominique Johnson. We appreciate you hopping on with us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hopping on with us, man. No, thanks for having me, man. Cheeks, how are you living? I'm good. Woods? Good, man. How you living? Good. 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 All right. Dom, you good? I'm great. All right, well, let's get right into it, man. So we are now, uh, we, had a, we had a week off because of Memorial Day. We're now two, two games into the finals. Warriors against the Celtics. Uh, Celtics beat the Warriors game one uh, in, a, in convincing fashion in the fourth quarter where they scored 40 points. Outscored the Warriors by 24 points in the fourth quarter. And Warriors bounced back to win game two. Uh, had a third quarter that was amazing, scored 35 points, outscored the, the, the Celtics, a uh, little bit of back and forth, but uh, they ended up winning by uh, 19 points, were up by almost 30 at one, at one point in the game, and uh, the, the, game, the series is moving to Boston, and game three coming up Wednesday, I'm going to start with you, uh, Chiefs. What? Yes. I'm gonna with you, Woods. I'm gonna start with you, Woods. I'm gonna start oh, with you, Woods. All right, it's all good. So, uh, uh, talk, talk about the first two games. What's your takeaway? I mean, obviously the Celtics now have home court advantage. What are your thoughts uh, moving forward? Well, game one, that uh, Al Horford went back to his Florida days and was hitting shots. Everybody was hitting shots. He couldn't shoot like that at Florida. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he went back to his youth. You. And I felt like. Uh, as a Laker fan, I was like, damn, here we go. These punk ass Celtics about to get a ring. And then I just kind of brushed it off. And then game two, I was like, all right, Lakers, we in good shape. They ain't getting no ring this year. Cheese. And so uh, the Warriors just bust that ass, man. And, and uh, Jordan Poole finally decided to play. Um, and it was just the energy. And I, and I know a lot of people to my to my right here might not might hate this, but Draymond in everybody's face played a, a big part, and also Gary Payton the second, yeah, or whatever. His energy uh, it, it was big time, and then um, and even Clay was off, but the the Warriors still you know got out. They were almost up thirty, and I feel strongly in my prediction that the Warriors will win. It'll be seven, but I'm I'm, I'm predicting the Warriors win. Boston doesn't play well at home in the playoffs this year. So I know that the Warriors are going to win either the next game or game four. I'm thinking they might even win the next game. And then uh, Doug will be in good shape to finish off the series. So. Yeah. Cheeks, uh, same thing. What are, your, what are your takeaways from the first two games? Um, I think uh, Brown brought him back in the third quarter. He had a good start in third quarter. He, Baskets at the baskets at the basket threes layups. I think he kind of set the tempo for the third quarter, and made them come back in the game, and then it was Al Tatum. If Tatum would have scored, he only had like twelve points. Imagine if he had like twenty or thirty points. But you talking about game one, right? Yeah, game yeah. one. Okay. It really would have been a blown out game. He just couldn't make anything. Um, Draymond is Draymond. I think he makes them go. I understand that, but I feel like Boston's gonna. Wait, come pa back to pause start. right there, Chiefs. What's, what is your issue with Draymond? Why you don't like him? I never said I didn't like him. He's just that player that he does things for them, yes, but he doesn't do stuff like that to be talking like that to me. So his, his skill level is not enough to where he should be talking the way that he does. Is that, yeah, is like, that what you're saying? What's his name? Poole? That's his name? Like him. He talks a lot. He thinks he's Steph Curry to me. Like. He gets a foul. He's like, come on, man. I'm like, dude, you're like th third, fourth player. Like, chill out. You're not Curry. Your back says pool, not Curry. Like, relax. He's always talking to the this, rev. Always hold complaining, on. Let me just let you know this, this, was, this was Dom's teammate in the Drew last year. I don't care. 
he is always crying. I just be like, oh my gosh. But I mean, I Every, like everybody me. cries. Yeah, but he talks like every five. He's like, no, I didn't feel it, man. I'm like, shut. Just go back down on the other side and just play defense. He's always complaining. So you, you're, you're tired of the demonstrative. Yeah, like attitude. Yeah, you came in when Curry was out. You played your role. You did well. We got that. Now Curry's back. It's time to just sit back. You're not the man up on the team. All right, so but you're talking about Jordan Poole right now yeah. and Draymond. Right. So you don't like him, or, him or Draymond. I, I love if I was playing against Draymond, I would love him because if, I think he'll make me play If you were playing play against him, yeah. What about when you playing with him? No, I just, he's a three-time champion. I don't, I don't care. He could be seven-time, eight-time champion. I, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like him. Like if I'm playing against, him, I'm like, yeah, I'm there about to bust. I'm about to bust your ass. Hold on, hold on. Like hold on. Oh, you heard that, right? I, I, I just want to make her because no, she said she, she didn't say that. Can we edit and rewind it? I just don't like but it. he'll make me play <laughs> harder. But I did not. I did not step on Eddie Murphy's couch. I did <laughs> step on Eddie Murphy's yeah, couch. I'm going for Boston. Dom, uh, what's your takeaway from the first two games, man? Uh, game. Well, first of all, the Celtics did their job. They got one game. Yep. Um, however, I think they got complacent when they saw the game was going away mm -hmm. um, and just said like, "Well, we we got one, so let's just get back to the house." Um, but it's their defense. It's, they got the best defense with the NBA, right? Yep. So, um, and then with the coach, uh, Udoka, his first time uh, in the head coaching position coming from the pop system, uh, it just shows you how strong that organization, you know what I'm saying, is. And then they brought Derek White over there, who's already like a part of it, so the trust is there. Um, so you see he's playing more than like Pritchard and the other guards and stuff over there as well. So that trust is there. And he's killing. He's killing, yeah. He's not, you know, playing rushed or whatever. Horford had a bad game yesterday. Um, a lot of people said like that was the original Horford, but it's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, me personally, like I'm going for the Celtics. I think that they're going to win. I've always, I thought it was going to be Boston and Dallas in the, in the finals. Um, but you know, what happens, it happens. Uh, game two, it was the turnovers for the Celtics. Like, you can't turn the ball over against the Warriors. They're going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a fast break team. And everybody know when you play the game, the first quarter and the third quarter is like the most important. Like, that's what sets the, sets the tones. And the Warriors was like a plus 35 in the third. Yeah. So that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's tough. And then you hit that half court shot. Yeah. That was like the momentum. It just shifted, you know? You know what I'm saying? It took everything. Like, it just took the air out of the balloon, man. Like, it was over with. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> took everything out, so I don't know what's going to happen. Um, game three, um, obviously, is to protect home court, but if they split again, um, I like their chances on the road. I think they'll correct their mistakes and stuff like that. It's all about adjustments because you're about to continuously play this team, so you know the plays, you know the sets. Um, the Clay situation, he's having a bad shooting, shooting series, but with a shooter like that, you have to respect it. So it's like even if he's not open or not hitting, you still have to like be there. You got to respect it. So um, they have to keep him on the floor. Uh, the, the Draymond situation, uh, in my opinion, just from watching it, the way the NBA is like calling the fouls and stuff like that, like it should have been a double tech. It should have or should not have? It should have. It should have been a double tech. Um, because now you got to see how they're going to ref the rest of the series, right? So if something like that happens again, if they call a tech, why didn't you do that the last time? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, but at the end of the day, the refs are human. Um, you gotta, you gotta live with it. But I just knew it was gonna be a tech. But I knew they didn't want it to be another flash. That, that's what, what I was gonna say. Do, do yeah. you think that they did didn't call they, a they tech sure because thought about it. they thought yeah. about it? Yeah, because yeah. the the head ref when they go to these reviews, he said it was a double tech. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So they made a judgment call because ratings, et cetera. You know what I'm saying, stuff like that. So um, we just gotta see what happens. Is that is that and before before I go, but is that is that ownership should that be on Draymond or should that be on the NBA and the and the refs? Draymond's just doing Draymond stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just that's he's the heart of that team. If he don't play, they don't go. You know what I'm saying? So he's getting them the shots and stuff like that. He's the one that's passing that ball like that. No matter what it is, the stuff that he does, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Diving on the floor for loose balls, deflections, etc., and stuff like that. So. Um, Everybody needs a player like that on their team. You, you must have a player like that now. They need to control that to a sense of what he's doing because, I mean, Jalen Brown was just protecting himself. He didn't have to put his foot on, on that dude's neck like that. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, just drop his, like, you know what he was doing. That's a man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like I said, I thought it should have been a double tech, but it, it, it is what it is. It's 1-1. One, one. Yep. So. Um, I think, so, two important things. One thing that you mentioned was the complacency that they had in game two once the game started to get a little, yeah. a little out of it, right? Because they didn't have that in game one. So, after game one, you know, I want, obviously, I'm a Laker fan, so I want, I don't want Boston getting another championship, having more championships than us. Um, what, what's the what's the count? 17-17. Oh, it's easy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, these bums will know. 17-17. They gonna win. 18-17. Wow. So after yeah. after game one, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, this this is different. This is weird, right? But because because. Golden State was up by 15, and then they were up by, they were still up by 12 in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And Boston could have accepted that and just played however, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. They 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 played hard, they 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 the defense tightened up, and they got they got steals and they they were out. They didn't they didn't miss no shots. They didn't miss no shots, right? But this time around, like you said, they they had already gotten one game. Mm And when it when it when the Warriors were going on a run and the crowd was getting hyped and everything yeah. like that, they didn't have the same sense of urgency that they did in Game One. Can I? All right. Go ahead. So, what, what happened was from the beginning of the game, the first possession. Yes. The Boston possession. Yep. Had the ball on the wing. They swung it to Horford. Draymond, Draymond ripped the jump, ball. You know what I'm saying? Jump ball. Mm-hmm. He already set the tone from there, letting letting Horford know. You ain't doing that. You're gonna have to drive. Yep. Right? Like he hit six threes in that first game or whatever. So it's like, you're not gonna hit another three on me. Right. You may do it on somebody else, you're not gonna do it on me. Right? right? So by him tying him up and the, the physicality that he plays with, and he's undersized. So if Horford's trying to post up, he's up under him, he's standing him up. Mm-hmm. He can't do nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then the referee's not calling that foul either because they're at home. Mm-hmm. So it's just like he set the tone yeah. from the jump, like it was gonna be a dirty game. Yeah, I agree. And and that's and, and to, to your point about Draymond, I mean he, he does what he does and, and whatever the refs call, he, he he's fine with that, right? Like yeah. for example in the Memphis series, he got hit with a flagrant two. Yeah, he paid what did that. he do? He ran off and yeah. tried to hype up the crowd even though yeah. they were in Memphis and right. and ran out. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just what he does. He's the type of he's a a distractor of the game, you know what I'm saying? He, he's gonna do whatever he can to get under your skin yeah. and, and get at you. But I just I just feel like Boston accepting accepting that complacency that they did and, and being content, I think that's gonna come back to bite them in the ass later on in the series. Because I feel like they should have fought as hard as they did game one yeah. to get back and try to, you know, to, to make the game a, a game, man. I, I just feel like, I, 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 I feel like they got content, and that, and to me, that was a that was a sign of a an inexperienced team. I, obviously, they've, they've never been in a situation before. Um, Ime, Ime Udoka is doing a great job. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's doing a phenomenal job. I've been sh- singing his praises almost every podcast. Um, but I mean, you know, it's, it's little things like that 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 can turn. I mean, the Warriors can take this momentum, and they're a streaky team. They can next game do the same thing, come out do the same thing get you down by 30 early and then now we're talking about being complacent and moving on to game four. It's a whole, it's a totally different scenario. What, what, what do you say to that word? I think the, the dangerous part for Boston is that Jordan Poole actually got loose. You know what I mean? Cause that first game he was kind of shaky. And then the, this second game he went crazy with the half court shot. And then with Clay still, like I said, is Clay still struggling? Gotta respect That's it. That's the worst part about it. Like yeah. he ain't even playing even turned on yet. And Boston hasn't been the greatest team at home, so they're gonna have to at least they're gonna have to hold hold serve for at least one of those games. Because like you said, the way Golden State starts rolling, they can win. They can ride for five, on three three wins straight, mm-hmm. and Boston can do the same if they're possibly better on the road. I think it's their turnovers, though, man. Yeah, like they, they had turnovers. they had over 15 turnovers, so it's like if you don't turn the ball over, they don't go on fast breaks. Did they have right. eight, what, 18 turnovers? I think so. Like, like 38 points or something know, like that. It's like 38 points or something like that. Right. So that's the that's the key thing right there. Like they're gonna play defense. I mean, it's the NBA, man. Like they're gonna hit shots, they're pros. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you just gotta know what you're gonna give up and then just go from there. Like it's just I would rather have Draymond try to average or try to score 30. Like he would have to shoot the ball. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not guarding him. 
because he's <laughs> like you, I, like in a sense of I'm giving him that space, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So he has to shoot it because that's how you can guard everybody else, everybody else, and then just go from there. But you up tight on him, he's faking that handoff, he's going to the basket. You know what I'm saying? Those are the basket that you can't give up. So that's just that's just my thing, man. They limit turnovers though, they'll be in the game. Um, but like with the experience, you gotta understand that Smart, Tatum, and Brown alone have played in like four game seven. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the finals, mm -hmm. but it's still, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. It's still four games. So, they, so they've already been in that in that type of fire. Udoka is already a champion, for you sure. know what I'm saying, et cetera. Like, he knows what to do. Like, it's going to, it'll be interesting to see what the adjustments look like. Cheek? Um, I think all you guys hit the point. I think Peyton coming back is going to be big for them. Yeah. I think him coming back and ready to play, I think that's going to be a big, because he, he can guard Tatum and kind of relieve Clay and Curry from guarding him too. So it's like, I think that's what got him in foul trouble the first game. He got three quick fouls and had to sit down. Mm -hmm. So if they can get one of them in foul trouble, they'd be all right. Can sit him on the bench early. How, how do we feel about, uh, before we move on to the next topic, how do we feel about Marcus Smart guarding Steph Curry so far? Is he doing a, a good job or? I think he's doing the best he can. Like, uh, he's a good defender. And that's he's, a, no, no, he's a defensive player of the year. Yeah, he's the defensive player of the year. Mm -hmm. I think he's doing the best he can, to be honest with you. They switched, I don't know if you noticed, they went to more of a screen and roll mm -hmm. in game two. So, I think Mark Smart is doing okay, best he can. They, they pre-switch too much. Like pre, the, yeah, before the screen even gets there? Yeah, they pre-switching. So it's like when you pre-switching, especially <laughs> with a shooter like that, it's like he already sees what's going on. And it's like, I mean, I'm a shooter too. If I space, if I yep. can just get a glimpse at the rim, it's over. It's already locked in, yep. you know what I'm saying? So whether I make it or miss it, I think it's a good shot. Yep, for sure. And with him, he can step further and further away from that three-point line. So you still have to be up there, man. But um, with, you know, Gary Payton, when the Celtics try to run these pick and rolls and stuff like that, that's who's switching off on you. Right. And that's the one that you don't want. <laughs> right. So it's like, you have to, get him away, you know what I'm saying? And call somebody else if it's Clay or whatever. Like, don't call a screen with, with GP, right? You know what I'm saying? Because the first game, they was doing Curry. It was like, that's what I'm saying. Curry, and that's how so you guys they're, they're still doing that, man. Like, it's, you don't do that. Or let Tatum just go down in the post. But I think he's looking for fouls too much. Mm. He needs to be keep more aggressive. keep trying to swing the ball and stuff through. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I just go through and go through their chest. They, they smaller than you. You're 6'9". You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you belling them out and you're a 90% free throw shooter. Right. So I was like, yeah, you don't really have to shoot threes. He doesn't have to shoot threes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He shoots a lot of them, too. He does not have to shoot threes, man. Like, it's, you can easily stay on that block, that mid post, and do what you got to do. But He's, I think he, he hit six, I think. Did he, five in the first half? Yeah, I think he yeah, had six. Yeah, he had six threes. <laughs> but he's like, he looks like he's 60 yeah. pounds out there. I don't but, think he likes the contest. But he only, shot, he only shot three shots in the whole second half, though. Was yeah. that what it was? Yeah. He's not aggressive. He needs to take that 24 off his shit. <laughs> Whoa, whoa. I mean, you're going to represent oh, you talking about, the, about the, yeah, uh, the, the, the patch? patch yeah. Oh, everybody got that. No, no, no she's talking, she talking about the band. He, he didn't have a band on yesterday. No, he had the patch. He had the zero. Yeah. The he black the, 24, yeah. right? Yeah, everybody has that. That's on funny. Boston. Yeah, yeah, Boston, they did it. Yeah, everybody has it. He didn't take yeah, that yeah, off because if he trying to play yeah. for Kobe, he ain't playing hard enough. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Cheeks, that's, that's, uh, that's some venom right there. Well, he's just got to be more aggressive. If they're going to win us, he has to be aggressive. If he's not. He, he's, um, sorry to cut you off, he's always uh, on those bounce back games, mm. right? Because the yeah. first game, he didn't shoot well. No, he didn't. He had 13 assists. Right. It's like, come on, somebody else picked up. That's what the team is for. But um, let's see what he does this game. Mm -hmm. He averages 30 plus. Now, now, now the question is, is he going to overcompensate this next game, go all out and shoot a lot of shots, and then maybe they get out of sync? That's up to the coach. Yeah, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think him. so. I don't yeah. see him doing that. That's up to the coach. I think he kind of recognizes, like, okay, this moment is bigger for me. If he can do another 13 assists, but he's got to put up probably 20-something, he'll, he'll try to do that. I think he may will make some adjustments that probably been in his ear and say, hey, don't go out there and try to score 50. Because if they score 50 in 
Jay Brown don't get off. Dubs win again. <laughs> right, right. All right, well, let's let's switch it up a little bit, man. So, uh, Darvin Ham was introduced today as the Lakers' new coach. Um, yeah, give him, give him some class. That's right, like You like that? <laughs> That's a humorous clap. That's a humorous clap. By yeah, the way. it's a sarcastic, sarcastic <laughs> ass clap. Um, just, oh apparently, he uh, is looking to hire uh, Rasheed Wallace as one of his assistants as well. Um, he's not with Detroit. Who? She. They they said he's the Lakers are hiring him. Oh, okay. Wallace? So he yeah. left Memphis. All right. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna start with you, Dom. Well, what are your thoughts on this on this uh, Darvin Ham hire? Throw me in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, uh, and and what do you think this does for the Lakers in terms of coaching and uh, leadership? Man. First off, congratulations for Darvin Ham. Yes. Um, that's big, especially another African American coach, yes. you know, to get that position. Yes. Um, I don't, I have no idea what's going to happen this season with the Lakers. Uh, health is the number one factor for it all. Like, it's their health. Um, I don't know what the roster is going to look like. Um, but Russ, AD, LeBron are. Still there, right? They're, they're, they're uh, safe. For, for now. They're mellow. Right? Right? <laughs> they're, mellow. They're, they're, they're safe, right? They're for safe. now. For now. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw a few snippets uh, of his interview and stuff like that. I think Russ was there and how he was saying like he wanted to get him back to that uh, defensive uh, like killer um, and just get back to having fun, man. I don't think Russ had fun this year. As you can see it, I think a lot of professional athletes, man, have been in that situation. I've been in it too. Um, you get into that funk, man, you just go deeper and deeper down that rabbit hole. And it just weighs in on you. You know, so you got the spotlight on you, uh, the pressure, especially people looking at what he's done before. Mm -hmm. But when you look at that team, he doesn't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, that's not call for that, especially like with Brian. He's going to control the game, especially in the playoffs. And the possessions lessen in the playoffs. Now, granted, they didn't make it there, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's. It's gonna be their health, man. Um, you got to take the good and the bad with Russ. AD gonna be out. We already know you that. You have to. <laughs> Anthony, oh, Anthony right. Davis Anthony gonna be out. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's it's so it's sad to see that like taking place or whatever because he's so talented. Um, some guys just have bad luck, man, with the with the injuries and stuff, man. Like it's just anything, and the injuries that he gets is like the hamstring mm. right like and it's not like a complete tear it's like a he pulled it so it has to heal on his own you can't do treatment to that a hamstring or grunt like if you don't tear it completely you can't do any treatment for it It has to heal on his own and now it just depends on how your body reacts to it but do you think he's taking the proper I don't know what he's doing. In the beginning, like, yeah, you know I don't how know. like LeBron works right. out, you think he's doing all that I'm, before? So I'm 34, I had surgery, I had bone spur removed on my left knee. Um, every time I jump, it felt like somebody was stabbing me, right? Um, played on that for five years. When I had the surgery, it would force me to sit down and just like reevaluate my body. Um, I learned things that I had no idea about and changed my diet, uh, worked out differently, um, more recovery, and now I've never felt better. But I'm 34, you know what I'm saying? So I'm jumping higher than what I was at 25 or, you know what I'm saying, whatever. So um, I think it's more so man, just educating yourself on your body. You got the, you have the resources, right? I was about to say, he's got all the resources. You have the resources to do it, right? So it's like, man, just, I mean, it's also like, you gotta wanna do it. And that's the thing, is uh, I see LeBron working out. He's back to working out, if you check him on Instagram. He always works out, nothing. right. And I'm just like, <laughs> right. I, mean, I mean, I just want to deliver AD some milk or something. Like, this dude is always breaking, bro. I don't understand it. And at, with, you have that type of money, you have to put in the money. Like LeBron, I think he said, what, a million dollars a year over the summer? Yeah, it's like a million. No, that's, just, that's annually. Yeah, yeah annually. Yeah, so he, yeah. you, if AD wants to be that type of elite athlete does need to find out what his body can take, what he can't, pause. And then it's like, um, he's got to get it together, man, because he'd be twisting his ankle, going for a ball at the school board. But that's just like, like, that's like that's bad, that's bad luck, luck, but right? at the same like time, crazy. I'm like, bro, you gotta like do something. Like, he's real flimsy. <laughs> Mr. Class. 
the, the other thing they said was, because you know he hit that growth spurt. Right. So his body hasn't adjusted. Body hasn't. Yeah. His body hasn't adjusted to that. <laughs> like you grew, you grew eight, you grew eight inches over the summer. He, uh, he just, he needs to get together. That's. He's so talented, but it just it hurts. He's like probably plays about like forty you, games. Okay, Cheese. Hold on, before you dig into him, I know how you feel, but think about that part though. Like he went from a, a, a point guard to a, a center in, in in three months. Like. His body, his body still, it, it takes time to adjust to that. That's, okay. that's crazy. So how long should we give him? I mean, it's been, it's been like, <laughs> what, eight, eight years? <laughs> it's been like, like eight, eight years in Chicago. <laughs> yeah. I'm just asking, how yeah. long should we she give him? She's tired of that one. And you can tell yeah. he's still got the guard I mean, kind of mentality. If too, he's sitting his ass on the block yeah. and stop trying to be a guard, he'd probably be all right. Yeah, it's, it's they, de they definitely need some, they need youth, man. <laughs> They need, they need you. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's gonna be tough to get because we gave away all the draft picks. All the draft picks till 2027. Y'all better get John um, Wall. Woods. What are your thoughts on <laughs> on the on the hire and, uh, and 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 you know how, how do you feel about the coaching and the leadership? At first, I wasn't really big on Darvin Ham, and then just seeing how he hearing about and seeing how he interacts with his young players, I'm like, all right, cool. That's that's gonna be a good hire. Um, we talked about Mark Jackson. We all know Mark Jackson is black ball. It ain't gonna ever happen. He'll be on ABC doing finals for the rest of his life. Man, I wish he could coach. I know. Um, I like it, and I like that he went out and is trying to get Rasheed. Is it official or no? Uh, He's trying to get Rasheed. And uh, listen, I'm not saying that we're gonna win the title, but I think that he'll have that locker room presence and be able to say, this is how we're gonna do things. We're gonna play hard. That's what we need. Because remember, we had no defense at all. As far as Russ, I'm still saying ship Russ up out of here, but I don't know for what. Because Russ deserves to be somewhere else because I like him everywhere else, but on the Lakers. So that's got, my thoughts on it. I got a question. Uh, and I don't, like I really don't know the answer to this. Um, when these head coaches join these teams, right? Um, are they allowed to pick their assistant coaches? So, for the Lakers, I know that one of the reasons why T. Lou did not take the job was because they wanted to pick his assistants for him. I think generally, the, 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 it's supposed to be that you are supposed to pick your own staff. Yeah. But there are certain situations, I don't know what was going on with the Lakers front office where they felt like they had to pick the so staff So, so that's, a, that's a huge factor. Well, yeah, it into going into that yeah. to those seasons, right? Because you, if you get the the head coach you want, but he can't get his support system, so it's just like like y'all, right? Y'all work off of each other, right? But if they keep you and they just bring in two randoms, and everybody has three different philosophies, it's just this. There's right. nothing but friction, right? So, and it's it's not like that in Europe. Right, so in Europe, when a head coach comes, he got his assistants, people, you know, you may have one guy that, that speaks English, right, to, to, to translate everything or whatever, if the head coach don't speak English. So he can relate to all the American players or other Europeans that, that don't speak the, the well, regular language. language. It's his staff. He picks that staff. Yeah, that's a good question. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I the Ty Lue situation, yeah. he said that. That that was that was crazy. I don't know why they would, why they did that, man. And then they gave Frank Vogel, Jason Kidd. Yeah, they they, they picked his assistants too, right? But that's not. I mean, with with Jay Kidd, that's not a that wasn't a bad selection. But they should have made him head coach. They should have made him head coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Vogel like that. Vogel couldn't do anything else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that was, they put that in his lap like, right here. Do fix it. Can't do nothing with that. Cheeks, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, no, I, I just want to know who else would he bring in besides Rasheed? I have no idea. I don't know. There's so many other coaches, man. Like they are, like everybody talks. You know what I'm saying? You you get a feel. You can just sit there and watch and see how different players or different coaches like react, especially like on the bench in tense situations, um, celebrations. You know what I'm saying? Like etc. Like you gotta. It's, Everybody has like different mannerisms, man. Like you got to look at that, and then you can kind of like pick and choose. It's, it's still it's recruiting. 
I was a huge, I was a huge advocate. I was really hoping that that you know, even when they had the finalists, I think it was down to uh, Kenny Atkinson, Darvin Ham, and Terry Stotts. Uh, uh, when they, Portland, right? Yeah, when they okay. announced those those three as the finalists, yeah. I was still holding out hope for Mark Jackson. Like, well, I hope they just say Mark Jackson. You know what I'm saying? But I am glad that they picked Darvin Ham out of those three. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I feel like. He's the one that can relate the most to, to these players. I was just about to say that. Um, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? First of all, being black, they, ex they, right, ex-player, they, they have a, a connection there already. And and that's that's one thing you gotta when you're coaching LeBron, you have if he doesn't have your respect, so. it, it, it's it's over, man. And you could tell that last season he Vogel did not have his respect, man. And I mean, there were times, and, and neither did Russell Westbrook, from, and that was almost from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And there were, there were times where, you know, they'd be sitting in the timeouts, and you'd, you'd be like, these dudes not even listening to him, man. And so hopefully that can change. Hopefully, you know, um, he can command respect coming in. I think he's already um, gotten, like, the, the, the stigma of, of being, you know, a, a good coach and, and like, no-nonsense type of thing. So. Hopefully he can, and you can't, obviously you can't, uh, can't be overbearing to LeBron. You have to, you have to include him in everything, but hopefully he can respect him. And, and that's, that's the bottom line. If he can respect Darvin Ham, it can be, it can be something that could be positive. I am worried about Westbrook though. I, I just don't know because you mentioned him, the way that he used to play, right? Yeah. And he, him not being able to play that way anymore. Well, he hasn't gotten that message, but everybody else knows that he can't play the same way that he used to play and still be effective. Russell so, still, he could still average, he could still average a triple double, but it won't, I don't see it being a 30, 15, no, and 15 yeah, it won't. type. It'll type be like 12, you know, 12, 12, 12, 12, something like that. And <laughs> he, could, he could still, I mean, he could average, he, he average 20. Yes. He could average 20. Um, but like I said, man, I think like me personally from watching him, never met him, don't know him, but like, it was the mental man. Like that's my something. Something was wrong. Like something was wrong, man. Like he wasn't. He was not having fun. It was too many inconsistencies. Yeah. He wasn't having fun with it. I mean, we could blame it on the coach. It could be. A, it could be a mixture of things. Because man. Well, I mean, there were a lot of. We heard that there was issues. Like he wanted to go. The coach had to go ask the front office if he could bench Russell Westbrook and things like that. And so you got the crowd calling you Westbrook. You know. Yeah, he's in the stands a lot too. I mean, I think he had a lot going on. And Frank Bolo didn't have. Did, he, you, say, did you say he was in the stands a lot? Like, mentally in the stands. Like, oh, you know, okay. somebody's calling you that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Family's getting fucked with and all that. And I just think Frank Bolo, that he didn't have the command of the locker room. He lost it. Yeah. And so people were sitting out and saying, like, the rest of the fight, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? So. He's going to be different this year. Oh, so. I, I really, really do, man. Because, like, like, like we said, I mean, we. We love Russ, but not on the Lakers, just, not on the Lakers. No, you just got to put him in the right system. That's the problem. Okay. You get yeah, him but, in the right yeah, system, but, he can oh, Yeah, he but Cheeks, like. every, every other place he's been, I mean, he's been the system. You just got to find the right system. Got to know when to put him in the game and so what you're saying, he So you're do. saying he's not a starter? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Because, I mean, I, I, if, if, that's your, if that's what you're saying, I could see him coming in well, and being with the a six team man. That they have but you can't now, have a, he has to be a starter. But you can't have a six man play, uh, getting paid forty seven million dollars. Yeah. But I'm saying the team that he that they have, he has to be a starter. There's nobody on the bench that's really good. Now well, if you guys get a team, a decent yeah. team, I think the team we the team will be good coming in and replacing like the LeBron so he can take over, not be on. You know when he's on the floor with LeBron, it's kind of hard because LeBron likes to dribble a lot. What, what do you say to that, Dom, about the the, the, the Russ? The Russ, that's like her dribble. <laughs> <laughs> Westbrook needs this I in mean, his hand all the time. Yeah, like the Westbrook needs space, right? The Lakers didn't have, they didn't have the shooters to, you know what I'm saying, to have that space. And then you got AD out as well. So it was, this whole year was just. You got to be trash. You know what I'm saying? Let, talk, let me ask you a question because. <laughs> This is something that we've talked about a few times. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> when it was announced that the Lakers were trading KCP and Kuzma and whoever else to get Russell Westbrook, what was your initial thoughts when that happened? Did you think that it would be something that could work? Thank you. 
Nah, you lost your, you lost your shooters, yeah. defense, and then like they was already there with you when you got the chip. So it's like they know. Well, hopefully their mindset would be like, all right, I want to, want to try to taste that, you know, what I'm saying that championship again. So, um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't really with it when they, when they did it. But then it was like, okay, you, you got these names. It looks good on paper, right? But it's a puzzle, man. Like you're trying to jam these pieces into this puzzle and it doesn't fit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now you got to really like figure it out. And now that's left with Darvin Ham because if it doesn't work out, that's another coach that's gone. That's another year of LeBron wasted. Good luck. Um, we don't know if AD, you know, so hopefully AD stay healthy. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a lot of uh, question marks. Is this, um, let me ask you guys this last question before we get out of here on, the, on this one. So let's say that scenario happens, right? Darvin Ham is not able to, yeah. you know, fix whatever it is, not put the puzzle pieces together. At that point, will LeBron be considered uh, a coach killer? Well, I mean, people have to realize, man, that if you, if you were able to like study that man's brain, and get the basketball knowledge out of there, it would be so much, you know what I'm saying? Because like, and even in those, uh, these playoffs and stuff like that, man, like your stories, like he's calling out their plays, their tendencies, their percentages, like he's a basketball junkie, you know what I'm saying? So it's like for him, and like you said, the respect factor, if he ain't going, he respected Ty Lue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Ty Lue can call him out. I don't think Vogel could, could really do that because he ain't really, you know what I'm saying? Like he knows, he may possibly know more than the coach. Right. So at that point, it's like, what can you tell me? And I've already won without you. Yeah. So like, what can you what can you tell me? But you just gotta earn that respect. Yeah. You have to earn that respect. Whether it's something else, you gotta earn that respect. Yeah. Yeah. Chief, did you wanna uh, get your uh, your DT? Nope, I just want this to be on film and record it because when the season comes, you guys like to switch it up. So you be like, oh, I didn't think he was a good coach. I'm I like, this not what we said, June 6th. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanna, I'm good. glad we got these cameras on. Cheeks, <laughs> you, you, you. Cause they sure they be taking Cheeks. things away. I didn't say that. You are the Chief, you, you bounce teams every every I don't month. Have, I never had a team, so I don't know what you, you guys are talking the Clippers, about. It's on audio. It's not on Because I want a team to beat in a series, yeah. I want the, like I want Boston <laughs> to win. I'm not a Boston fan. I just want Boston uh, to was, win. You was bad one. You was Clipper Darrow. Clipper and Darrow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Calling us out, yeah, we gonna win it. We, we, we. And then they, they had a good squad. All right, Cheeks. Uh, man, Cheeks. I had players. Cheeks, so do you, you don't want to, you don't want to get into your DT. Uh, nope. All right, you got a shout out, Cheeks. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. She's the worst, man. <laughs> Cheeks, we got two weeks Memorial Day. You ain't got a shout out. Nope. Woods, you got a shout out. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, I Will Who. Uh, my daughter's in a basketball camp uh, out in the, the IE. It's real good for the kids. And then I'm going to give a shout out to uh, my boy Skip, my boy AO, uh, 30 for 30. Um, did a mixtape, the M1 mixtape thing. It was brought back a lot of memories. Skip to my loop? Yeah, so it's, it's still shot them out. And that's it for me. Yo, I haven't seen that documentary. I need to see it. Yeah, I need to see it, man. We, that's awesome. Dom, you have a, uh, anybody you want to shout out? before we get out of this one? I mean, just my family, man. Like, yeah. You know, they, they here. Uh, yeah. Definitely wouldn't be here without them. And that's about it. Yeah. Well, me, I got to give a shout out to Playmaker as always. Playmaker! Yeah. Yeah. That's why <laughs> the business. <laughs> he always say that. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got, man. I'm House. That's Woods. Cheeks. Brother Dominique Johnson. And we out, y'all. Peace.